programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com. Straight from marketing expert, Gary V, who says that, every business needs a mascot like me. For sure, I'm going to help brand hockey videos for Dennis. As importantly, I don't drink, very much. I'm not likely to be charged with a motor vehicle violation, or domestic abuse. I'm not hard to get along with. And, I'm not going to constantly ask for a raise. Actually, Dennis is already overworking me but how can I complain? That's what it's like to employ a cartoon mascot like me.
Hi there, and welcome back to the final module in the Create Your Skaters Meal Plan Template. It's your self-paced workshop to help your skater eat, skate, win. I'm Hockey Mom RD, and let's get started. So in today's class, what our agenda is, you're going to understand what time is the best time to eat your pregame meal, why it's important to eat your pregame meal, you're going to learn the balance of the macronutrients in your pregame meal for optimum performance, and you're going to see an example of a pregame meal. So the best time to eat your pregame meal is four to six hours before the game or before your practice. Now, you want to make sure that you're eating your pregame meal in the four to six hours before ice time, be it a practice or a game, because you want to make sure your body has time to digest the large meal. The human body can only handle so much food at one time, and you want that food digested and out of your stomach before you hit the ice. So foods to avoid on game days and on practice days, just so you get in the habit of eating hockey strong all the time, are foods that are rich in fat. These foods are going to slow you down. You will feel like you have lead legs, like you're skating in cinder blocks, and it'll also make you harder to focus. So foods like potato chips, pizza, french fries, Chicken nuggets, you know, if you go someplace and there's fried chicken, see if you can get grilled chicken instead. These are not going to help you be your best when you get on the ice. So when you begin to build your meal, the first thing I want you to think of is choosing a carbohydrate rich food first. Remember, hockey is a stop and go sport and your body needs carbohydrates. So some examples would be pasta, rice, some potatoes, breads cereal, grains such as couscous, quinoa, barley, and oatmeal, and fresh fruit. Next, please remember that these are the majority of the foods that are going to go on your plate. So you're going to, half of your plate is going to be made up of carbohydrate-rich foods. And these foods are your energy-sustaining foods for ice hockey. Next, you choose a lean protein. In the four to six hours before ice time, you don't want much fat. You can have a little bit, but you don't want a fatty meal as it takes too long for your body to digest it. So you could choose protein foods like lean beef, chicken, ham, turkey, fish, eggs, and low-fat dairy foods. You could also choose a starchy vegetarian protein like a legume um, if you do not eat meat. These foods will help you focus during the game and you will not feel hungry because protein really helps us stay feeling satiated the longest. And the last step is to choose some vegetables. So these are like your green beans, carrots, zucchini, yellow squash, broccoli, mushrooms. There's a whole ton of vegetables you could choose from. Choose the ones that you like. These foods are necessary because they provide your body with vitamins and minerals that you need for your growing body and to help you recover from your skate. So here's an example. With carbohydrates being the most plentiful, you want those to take up about 50% of your plate. Now you can have your fresh fruit on the side, which will also add some more carbohydrates. And a low-fat dairy would also add some more carbohydrates and some protein. So maybe say, uh, a fruit yogurt cup to go alongside of this meal. Then your protein is going to be up in one quarter of the plate, such as the lean meat, the fish, the chicken and the eggs, just no fried foods. Please do your body a favor and keep it light so that you feel really good when you get on the ice. And then you want to have your vegetables over in the top corner also, or the bottom corner. So these could be raw vegetables, they could be cooked vegetables, it could be vegetables that are even in a vegetable soup. So there you have it. That is what it looks like to plate a pregame meal in the four to six hour window and the steps to go through it. Choosing your carbohydrate rich foods first, then your lean protein, rounding it out with some vegetables, and don't forget to add some fresh fruit 
and a low fat dairy choice. Go make it a fantastic day. If you'd like any more information about hockey nutrition, head on over to hockeymomrd.com. ways to go ahead and bring in athletic based training into your workouts is by adding in a secondary movement and when we talk about adding in secondary movements that is truly how our body functions very often you're going to see multiple movements happening together so let's bring them into your workouts let's break that down a little bit first way to go ahead and bring in secondary movements is to go ahead and bring in low impact secondary movements what do I mean by that probably going to go ahead and bring in some type of squat to an overhead movement or some type of reach to a lower lower body movement. Let me show you what I mean. As an example, I'm going to go ahead and do my overhead press. And I'm going to come in here, I'm going to drop into a little bit of a squat and go ahead and overhead press. So that's an example of a low impact secondary movement. In this case, it's a squat with my press. Way to go ahead and another way to do that is to go ahead and bring in a reach to your lower body movements. So let's go ahead and hook the band onto my thing. So I could go ahead and go out here and position myself and do a simple split squat, but I also could go ahead and do a split squat reach. Or if I want to go ahead and do a split squat this way. But now I'm gonna go ahead and do a simple reach. Notice how I'm bringing in a secondary movement, but it's a low impact movement. So it's a very safe way to go ahead and start bringing in athletic based training in your workouts. What's another option? Another option, bring in a step. Again, I'm gonna take this back here. What do I mean by that? Well, I could go ahead and split my stance and do a simple press. Or I could go ahead, low impact, drop into a split squat and do a press. But my second way I could go ahead and do it is take a step and press. So now I'm going ahead and bringing in a little bit more of an impact into the exercise. Still very safe, but I'm bringing in a step into my overhead or into my chest press. So a lot of times when you're training upper body, you can bring in a step. But what about, what can you do from a lower body standpoint? Well, you're already doing it, but you're gonna bring in a reach. So now, let's go ahead, and let's just do a simple side lunge, but now I'm gonna go ahead and bring in a reach. So now I'm going ahead and putting two movements together. So that's a perfect way of going ahead and bringing in something more of an upper body movement with your lower body lunging. Lastly, let's stay with this for a second. Let's go back to the chest press. This is going to be more advanced. And again, you can't always bring this in, but you can bring in a hop. So now we can go ahead, instead of going and bringing in our split squat, instead of bringing in our step, we're going to go ahead and bring in a hop. Much more explosive, much more aggressive, but yet another way to go ahead and bring in an athletic base movement. So now, here's some keys to going ahead and bringing in those three levels of movement. Either a secondary movement where you're bringing in a squat or reach, a secondary movement where you're bringing in a step, a secondary movement where you're bringing in a hop. First key, you gotta have timing. Well, that makes sense. Athletics, athletes have great timing. 
So when I go ahead and I do this, this step and press, I gotta time it. I gotta time it so my step and my press are working at the same time. I'm not gonna step and then press. They gotta work at the same time. That's why very often, don't bring in the step first. Just get the hips going. Get the hips going. And just time it where you're bringing in your simple split squat and press first. And obviously then, when we go to the hop, it's got to be very explosive, but the timing has got to be perfect. So timing is going to be key when you start bringing in secondary movements. Second key to going ahead and bringing in a secondary movement is going to be making sure you complement movements that are complementary to each other. Let me tell you what I'm, let me show you what I mean. So if I'm going to go ahead and let's take that same simple chest press. If you noticed, I can't, typically it becomes very natural for me to drop into my split squat and come out of my split squat as I do my press. By doing it that way, my hips are helping my pushing. You'll see it a lot when you get outside the gym and you start functioning. You're gonna see how when you go to lift, you drop into your squat and then you lift. You don't go ahead and stay straight, bend over, and then as you lift, drop into your squat. See, so it's very consistent. There's certain movements that complement each other. So you have to make sure that you're doing those and using those and bring those in. Now, is it wrong to go ahead and not do that? No, it's very easy to go ahead. If I go ahead and do a chest press, and let's say I chest press and I squat, you're gonna immediately see, see how I lost my balance? It's gonna be much tougher to do that because you're putting movements that are not complementary together. And that's okay, but the whole idea is to be athletic. So let's combine up movements that really truly work together well, like a squat and a chest press, or a squat and a roll, or a squat and an overhead press, and not reverse them. Make sense? I hope so. So that's gonna be a key as well. So, very simple. How do you bring in athletic-based training into your workouts? Bring in a secondary movement. And then typically, that's gonna either be some type of squatting, stepping, or hopping when it comes to upper body, and some type of reaching for lower body. My name is Shawnee Harley. I'm a two-time Olympian and mental toughness coach. I was on the phone today talking to a parent of one of my clients who is an athlete. Their daughter is a hockey player. There's a big tryout coming up this weekend. The parent was so nervous, so anxious about what was going to happen. And I said, why? Tell me more about that. And here's what they said. I'm worried about my daughter being cut. And I said, why are you worried about that? And the parents said, because I'm afraid of how she's going to handle rejection. That's a good answer, isn't it? This is what I said. No one can reject us unless we first reject ourselves. Hmm. Hmm. Something to think about. How do we help our kids? How do we help our athletes prepare for the day when they're going to get cut? Prepare for the day when they're not going to be on the first line. Prepare for the day when they're going to get what they don't want. We can choose to not be rejected. We can choose to say, you might cut me. You might not choose me. I might not be on the starting lineup. 
but I choose not to reject myself. Boom. Just get a load of what Coach Chick says about drill design. You know, for almost every drill we coaches use, there is the obvious good, as it's meant to do, plus a not so obvious negative. And, after that, how about things he sees so often, in social media? The problem, is that a hockey player doesn't get to play in a vacuum. No, everything he or she does on the ice, is usually done amid lots of craziness. And, at some levels like, the one the kid above competes at, there are people out there on the ice trying to hurt you. Then, in contrast to what one hockey guru suggests, about his shooting courses. Hockey goals seldom come, off the sticks of players who are standing prettily, in front of a net. No, there are bad guys all around, and, we might be better off practicing shots while being mauled, while on the seat of our pants, while far off balance, on one skate, and so forth. So, do check out this free post, for much, much more on his observations. I'm forever teasing some of my parents about the things they yell from the bleachers. I know, it is important for the kids to keep their sticks on the ice. And, for the most part, it is important to hold the stick in two hands. Yet, there are actually a few occasions when it's useful for a player to be adept at handling his or her stick in only one hand. A backskating defensive player should hold the stick in the top hand as he or she plays a rival puck carrier. In penalty killing, an extended stick is often used to block enemy passing lanes. An extended stick is also useful as a steering tool when a checker approaches a puck carrier. Some of the best puck handling moves originate with an attacker teasing the defender with a very wide movement of the puck. And the puck can often be held far out and away from an opponent in this fashion. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.